welcome to Between the Lines. On this show, you will hear about and from lesser-known Canadian authors and writers who, for whatever reason, have remained under the radar of traditional publishers and publishing houses. If it has something to do with writing or the writing process, you are going to hear a discussion about it here. I'm your host, Randy Lacey, and I encourage you to grab your bevy of choice, get comfy, and get ready to go between the lines. People come into writing in several ways. For some, it was through writing assignments at school. For others, it may have been from reading and wondering if they might be able to write. Every writer has taken a different path which commenced their writing journey. Every writer's journey will be different, yet similar. But one thing all writers have in common is a different destination. Hello and welcome to this episode of Between the Lines. On this episode, I have the pleasure of speaking with Tara Shannon, whom I first met in a Facebook writing group a few years ago. The only thing I am going to tell you about her is she currently resides somewhere. Now is her opportunity to share a little more about herself before we get to the nitty gritty. Hi, Tara, and welcome to Between the Lines. Hi, Randy. Thank you for having me. Nice Uh, to be here. Well, it's nice to have you here. As you heard, uh, rather than me read from a piece of paper telling everybody about you, I'm going to give you the opportunity to um, just tell a little bit about yourself, you know, have uh, hobbies or, <laughs> no, leave your habits out, uh, hobbies, uh, that sort of thing, you know? <laughs> so I turn the mic over to you. Yeah, sure. I don't know that I'm really all that exciting. I mean, writing is my hobby and uh, it's kind of it's growing beyond that but uh, I still consider it a hobby of sorts um and you're right I do live in somewhere in Ontario um <laughs> I live in, in uh, uh rural uh southern Ontario um just it's uh, it's it's hard to kind of pinpoint because a lot of people don't know it's not like I'm saying Toronto and it's like oh I know exactly where that is I'm about I don't know half an hour south of Hamilton and half an hour away from Port Dover and half an hour from Brantford. I'm kind of in the, mi- in the middle of the country with cows as my nearest neighbors. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and my desk and my office space is my dining room table. I think like a, a lot of other writers maybe yeah. do the same. And uh, so I'm nice and close to the coffee pot and or the kettle to make a cup of tea. Yeah. So I, I'm a dog mom and a step mom. I have two uh, grown stepdaughters, and uh, I live out here in the peaceful countryside with my uh, my husband, I guess, of about the last 10, 11 years. Well, thanks for uh, for sharing <laughs> a little bit about yourself, Tara. I guess we'll get right into the, uh, the questions. Uh, uh, do you recall the first time you were inspired to write outside of a, an educational setting? Oh, the moment I could put words on paper, I started to want to write stories. My my dad was a a good storyteller. I loved books of every kind and going to the library and watching Reading Rainbow with LaVar Burton and kind of like right from that kind of earliest memories are that's what I want to do when I grow up. And why not start immediately? So um yeah, it was a very, a very early thought. I remember having that that's, that's what I wanted to do. So I would even just like scribble on paper and, and pretend before I really knew, you know, what words were putting them together. I just wanted to make books, maybe about four or five or six years old, something like that. Really, really, really early on. You said your dad was a storyteller. Were they mostly fictional or real life stories or? Um, he tells, he tell me stories about his life growing up in, in Ireland and, um, they'd usually be, you know, I'm sure he embellished them to some extent. What good story isn't? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, and then sometimes he just, he'd just make, make them up at bedtime. But, uh, I always remember they were, they were fun. And, uh, and I was like, I, I want to do. I want to be able to do that too, just like make something up off the top of my head or, you know, have the, the crazy adventures he, he tell about, you know, life in, in Ireland and roaming around the countryside, having fun with his friends. Hmm. So. 
Now you said, <laughs> you said that, uh, so this was about five or six years old and you said when you grow up. Now have, have you yeah. achieved that status yet? I think, well, just, just last year, my first book was, was published just before Christmas last year. So, and I, and I, I only just got to see, well, when was that? In the spring, mm. I guess, maybe, or over the summer. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, these times are strange. So everything's all over the place. And, um, I was only able to get into a, a bookstore a couple of months ago and actually see my book on the shelf. And so that was kind of a coming together of a, of a, a lifelong dream to see it, to see so it that, sitting there. That defined your adulthood. So yeah, I, I mean, I know my book has been out there for a while. People are, are buying it. They're reading it. They're telling me, you know, leaving reviews and things like that. But to actually see it on the shelf, I mean, I, and I've had it in my hands myself. Um, but seeing it in the bookstore, that was, that was a, that was a moment that I'll always remember. Yeah, I mean, we in in the writing groups, we we hear people saying, "I've got my book in my hands," but to see <laughs> it on a bookshelf in yes. a bookstore is something entirely different. I would have. Yeah, yeah, it was um, a, it was a thrill. Yeah, is it ever going to wear out? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'd like to go back in and see it in there again, and and maybe in different bookstores. And yeah, I don't know if it'll wear off. <laughs> Oh, there's an old B. There's an old BB King song. The thrill is gone. I hope it never wears out for you. <laughs> I hope. I hope that too. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, were you one of those writers who kept everything to themselves, or were you one of those here? Read this. <laughs> and, and I think. I think that as if as you've known me over the last how long? Like three years since Canada Rights has been um, that, yeah. up. I've been. I've been. I'm a sharer. Yeah. I like to share because I, and I think early on that was just, it's just always been in, in my head that like even the little stories I would write when I was younger, I wanted to share them with my, you know, friends and my, you know, my best friends and, and being online, there's a little bit of a, like, you know, we're not face to face, so it's a bit removed. So I'm like, okay, let's put it out there and see what happens. They, you know, and it was encouraging. Yeah. I'm, I liked, I'm a sharer and, and, Plus, it's like, I think if I don't share it, what if nobody ever then sees it? And then it just sits in my, you know, notebook or in my, you know, in a document in my laptop and nobody gets gets to to see it and read it. And uh, I never expected that my work would would resonate in the way that it has over the last couple of years and grow as it it has. But uh, but I think that's in part because I share and that's what allowed that's what allowed it to to get out there and grow and and bring uh, the opportunity to have a, a published book to me. So I know a lot of people don't they're like no, I don't share, I don't want to. Well, a, a lot of people and and I'm included in this, but a lot of people uh they write as a therapeutic uh form yeah. of of healing and so uh yeah. to share uh would be almost sacrilege because you're letting your innermost feelings uh known to everybody. Uh, and well, that's how and it started it, out for me. Yeah. And it, that's, that's, that is what it is for me. It is certainly like rabbit and bear while I'm writing in general is therapy. It was fun for me early on when I was a kid just to write a, you know, a silly, funny story. But as I've grown up, it's, it's most definitely therapy for me. And yeah, it is, it is a bit daunting sometimes when it's like, Oh, I'm going to put this out there. You know, what are people going to think? But also as I've, I've evolved with my own healing process and bond therapy over the years, the more I'm comfortable with myself and what I've been going through, I, I don't mind sharing it. I'm not, that fear has kind of left me some, it's still there. There's still a little bit of fear, yeah. um, but it's helping some people, even if it's just one person, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to help them. But that's the feedback I'm getting is that what started out for me as, as complete therapy with rabbit and bear is now helping other people. And that is a joy. Oh, fantastic. For, <laughs> for me, I, uh, like I said, it was, a uh, you know, therapeutic for me, it was my feelings for me only blah, blah, blah. But I accidentally left my notebook out one day and a friend picked it up and started reading it. You know, why aren't you sharing this? You know how many people would benefit from this? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. You, you would be surprised how many people can, will resonate with this. And then I started sharing and I had no problem with it, but yeah. right. There is a little bit of apprehension and fear, 
Because you're yeah. we're putting your your heart and soul out there, right? And uh, yes, yeah. yeah. So does that bring up uh, any fear of rejection for you then? Sometimes right. the more personal I get with with writing things, mm-hmm. but uh, maybe more so. Like the first time I shared something on Canada Rights, I was like, ah, hit enter <laughs> and uh, and see what happens. And I think there's also this thought that like why why nobody's gonna read it put it out there, see what happens. And just, I think that was really what I thought was like, nobody's going to, nobody's going to care about this. When I, when I first started doing rabbit and bear was entirely, you know, for myself to help me process anxiety and, and grief and depression and, and those sorts of things, things that, that would kind of jumble themselves up in my head and, and uh, I could make sense of them by writing it out. And uh, so I, I'd share it on social media and, and it was certainly a boost of confidence to share on, on Canada rights because I, I had a lot of nice feedback, but in other places, I, you know, it was a very few people that were interacting with me. Mm. And so it took me by complete surprise when my one image went, went viral. And cause I just was like, nah, people aren't really paying attention. <laughs> Surprised they were. Yeah, very. Yeah. I, now you've mentioned Canada rights a few times. And of course it's a, mm-hmm. a Facebook writing group. I, I can remember your early days of posting on Canada rights and you, grown you you've matured as a writer as a as well just in general i've i've seen you just i guess blossom into the creator you are right now how much do you uh, attribute to uh, groups like canada rights and and other things like that so that was a totally um, off the topic uh, yeah no 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 that's no i i i uh i give a, a lot of credit and and dues to canada rights and and the members of of that group because that's that's where for me it really it started and it was very I found it welcoming I found I learned I've learned a lot from other people I've made friends there I I have my my writing buddy I um met in that group and and uh we talk regularly and and uh work through different projects together and that helps me a lot too I think and um yeah no I I really it was a great growing and learning experience and and that's where rabbit and bear really i think started for me i'm i'm not entirely sure where cuz the the one image that went viral it was it was taken from one of my i think it was instagram and it was cropped and my name was removed so this is another fear of course that writers and artists have that their work can be taken um, so that happened to me and that image went viral without my name attached to it so I, I caught it pretty fast and um and I would go back to Canada Rights to, you know, kind of tell my story of whoa, like, oh look what's happening. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and I mean it it was it was scary but exciting at the same time because had if that hadn't happened, the the rest of you know what, what happened beyond that maybe wouldn't have, you know. Yeah. If I hadn't started chasing after it and being like, This is mine and then growing, you know, that forced me. <laughs> to take things more seriously and like to up my game on social media and put myself, I put myself out there even more because I was told after that, it's like, okay, well, you have to establish your presence and your make it known that this is what you do and attach your name to it. So, you know, if anybody tries this again, I have this backlog of, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, a store, a website. And it's mm-hmm. like, no, that's mine. Yeah. So. So uh this isn't one of the questions either, but you bring okay. so many options for other questions. But uh, <laughs> was rabbit and bear or bear and rabbit? Which way is it? Rabbit and bear? Bear and rabbit. Rabbit, rabbit and bear. Rabbit and bear. Okay, that's that's what yeah. I thought. So rabbit and bear was that self-published or did you go through a publisher or? I I went through a publisher. So and and I and that publisher found me through Canada Rights. Well, and uh, yeah, and uh so I was sharing rabbit and bear sharing you know bits about my story and and so i rabbit the one image went viral just at the start of the pandemic back in march 2020 yeah and so i was i was contacted by a publisher uh, heather down with winter tickle press and she asked me if i wanted to be a part of an anthology um she was putting together with another author um catherine kenwell and i said sure why not 
And, uh, so I, I wrote about my experience going viral and the, the effect I was feeling because of that, uh, worldwide and getting messages from people and how that particular image was helping people at that particular time. So that, that started it. And I, I maintained that connection with Heather and, and she kind of put it out there early on. She's like, well, what do you think about maybe doing a, a standalone book of just rabbit and bear and you know like sure I didn't at that point kind of know what that would look like but she put it out there and she was like yeah I don't she was she wasn't sure then either she had other projects on the go and and I I am kind of outside of what she normally publishes too it's more you know, nonfiction and, uh, Medic's Mind is one of, one of her books that she has out there. Um, Matthew Hannigan, I think is a, another, uh, Canada Rights yep. member he was. So I feel like I was, I'm kind, I was kind of a little bit out of her com- comfort zone, but she was, she was willing because she could see, see right. the effect yeah. and, uh, the potential. And, uh, so anyways, it, it finally, I think not canceled, uh, Canadian Kindness. During the face of COVID-19, that was the anthology, and that was published in early, late spring, I want to say, of um, 2020. And then it was by the end of that summer that we were we were putting together a rabbit and bear book calendar that we did a Kickstarter for, yeah. and then and then the book, and it came just before. So yeah, that, that all that all was possible because of of Canada Rights. So how much of uh how much of the marketing um aspect of of this whole process were you involved in or was um, that right up to the uh publisher? Um that was that's pretty well me. Like certainly Heather does help like she has her her site for Winter Tickle Press and and um she <laughs> she does yeah, she does uh she certainly helps me and puts out like the press releases that I've had. She's She's put those together and, and put them out there for me. But beyond that, it's me doing, and excuse me, strategizing with Heather um, about certain things. But it's it's mostly, I think, me. And has that been overwhelming for you or has it been an, a um, relatively decent process? I think it's relatively, I mean, everything sometimes is when it's new, it's overwhelming. It's like, ah. mm-hmm. I didn't before, you know, going viral. It was like, I don't think anybody asked me anything. I get, you know, you know, questions and encouragement on Canada rights and, and from friends and family. But, uh, when I went viral, my, my message box started just to go crazy. And, uh, and that was a bit, I was like, okay, I got to catch up to this. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm used to it now, mm-hmm. I think. <laughs> well, do you think you'll ever truly be? Uh, used to it or uh, it, there's still a possibility for surprises? Oh, I, I think there's always possibilities for surprises. You just never know what's going to happen. That's the joy of what we do. Then. And yeah. And it, that's exciting. Like I don't, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what might come next and the opportunities that might, you know, come from this or from putting, you know, my other writing out there. And as my, you know, social media grows, um, back to the script now, I guess. <laughs> where, do you, where do you find your inspiration to write? Um, from my, from my own life and experiences and then just, just life in general. Like I try and, and be organic about or holistic. I don't know if those are the right words. I think they are about how I go about things. And, um, since day one doing rabbit and bear, it's been, it's like I said earlier, it's been my therapy. And it's come down to, you know, the thoughts and, and feelings going on inside my head and trying to express them in as most, you know, most concise way that I can so that one, I'm understanding it better and so that others can understand it. I know early on, my partner wasn't sure how to handle my anxiety and the depression. He, he wanted to fix it mm. and it wasn't for him to fix. It was for me to, to process and figure out but I certainly wanted him there by my side. And that's what inspired the first, the, the one that went viral. But I'm a cancer survivor. I've, Good for you. Congratulations. And thank you. That's been 10 years. 2012 is when I, I, I had thyroid cancer. So my thyroid thyroid was removed in, in 2012. And I had treatment in uh, January of 2013. 
just before I was diagnosed, my dad passed away. And then in the spring following my treatment, my mom passed away. She had cancer. And then in and around the very same time, I miscarried, my marriage ended. There's There was a lot of things that happened in a very short amount of time. Mm. And that all of that kind of went up into my brain because, and I didn't, I didn't really deal with it right away. I don't know that, I don't know that one can, um, at least that's been my experience. You kind of take it in and you keep moving forward. And as long as my mom, yeah. yeah. And that was what happened for me because, you know, after my dad passed, it was, you know, just things just kept happening. Like I, I was, uh, my mom's cancer returned, you know, I was diagnosed. There was just appointments and, you know, all around and, and, uh, so it was like, just keep going. And then when my, after my mom passed and things settled with the estate, I just kind of sat there and was like, who am I now? <laughs> and, uh, and then that's kind of when my journey with, with rabbit and bear kind of comes out of that and figuring out who, who I actually am without them and how I wanted to go forward. So that's, that's the basis for what inspires what I do is that particular period of, of my life. And then, and then everything that's happened since then, working with the therapists and my doctors and, and just life. And sometimes it'll just be, you know, something I'll see on television that inspires a thought or something on social media or just a feeling I have inside. And then I'll start, you know, I'll, I'm making notes constantly. I pull over the car a lot. And uh, <laughs> you're one of those head. drivers, are you? <laughs> um, if it's safe enough, I pull over and I open up my notes on my phone and I'm like, yeah. I'll be, you know, <laughs> trying to get to sleep at night and something. I'm like, oh, there's a rabbit and bear. <laughs> and I'll, I'll write it down in my notes and then I'll, I'll look at it again the next day and be like, no, OK, that one needs to be finessed a bit more, or, mm. you know, whatever. And, yeah, it's, it's everything going on around me is is potential so you, inspiration. You could be sitting at your dining room table with your notes sprawled in your computer in front of you. You look out yeah. your dining room window and, oh, I see this in a different light and, and it inspires you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah, cancer seems to uh, affect everybody in some way or another. My mom was 42 and she lost her life to cancer, so uh, way too young. That is very young. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, you know, she's in a better place, we hope so. <laughs> yes. yes. Let's see here. Uh, we go from inspiration to, uh, what's your writing goal? Just to, just to keep going, <laughs> to keep going on this, what's happening and, and, um, to keep creating and, and to make it my career. Oh, I was just, yeah, just to make, I would like love it to be my, my full-time, part-time, whatever it's going to be job. I would, I would love that. It's, it's joyful. It brings me joy. And, and do you see more rabbit and bear in the future or? I, I think so. It surprises me sometimes because I'm like, I, 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 I go through lulls. I think like every writer and it's not, I don't know if it's necessarily writer's block because I just move on to something else, work on a, on a novel or a short story or a children's story. And, uh, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's more rabbit and bear. You know, there's another one. And, uh, and they come out. So yeah, I, th- I can see rabbit and bear continuing on indefinitely. I, I can't, yeah, I just don't know. Cause every time I think I'm like, all right, I'm out of ideas. Then something else comes up. I love when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part where I have to apologize to you simply because. <laughs> I had made the assumption that uh, Rabbit and Bear was a children's book and that you were a children's oh. author. And, I mean, you politely corrected me to tell me that it was actually <laughs> a graphic novel. Is that correct? Yeah. No need to apologize. It's there's a, there's I get a lot of, you know, people who think the same. And why not? It's it's illustrations that are very simple. And the di- dialogue is sometimes, you know, very simple or seemingly. And it looks like a children's book, but, but yeah, it's actually sold in, in under graphic novels and, uh, along with other similar sort of artists out there. Charlie Mackesy is a, is an artist and a writer out of the UK and he kind of went big and I didn't really, I didn't really know about him when I, I started out until somebody said, Oh, your work's kind of like Charlie Mackesy, the boy 
the boy, the horse, the fox, and the mole is his his number one selling book. And uh, so it was nice to see my book on the shelf next to his. And then now I see other kind of similar authors emerging, doing kind of similar things. So I'm kind of wondering if we might come together and create a new kind of genre under graphic novels. Because when you go to look up my book, say on on Amazon or or in chapters, it's it's there with Charlie Mackesy, but then there'll be, you know, Batman and Walking Dead next to it. And it's like, this yeah. I, I think it comes with the definition of graphic novel, right? Yeah. So like, what yeah. is the true definition of graphic novel? Yeah. I think it's under, I think it, they're actually under literary graphic novel in, in chapters anyways. Okay. And when I, when I go on Amazon and, and see it, say in, in Canada versus US versus the UK, there's a lot of other subgenres that, that I don't quite understand, like Dark Horse and Hamlin. Those are, those are spots where rabbit and bear show up. And again, alongside say batman and, and it's just kind of weird <laughs> but yeah. there there i am so yeah my 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 uh audience is broad mostly adults but uh a lot of people are buying the book for initially they're buying the book for i'm gonna get this for my grandchild or my child and and then i'll hear afterwards like i actually want one for me <laughs> <laughs> I, I know of a, another person from Canada writes who she published a book and it was for her, it was therapy for her and it wasn't necessarily a children's book, but it was, you know, I'm going to say this the wrong way, but it was simply illustrated and the dialogue seemed basic, but it went deep. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, it was all about, a, a, I think, a, a dog that, she, mm-hmm. that was in her family that became to be a big part of her life and so yeah i mean they could be just about anything i guess yeah yeah it could yeah it it surprised me too (laughs) that that's where i fall but yeah i know it's there's a lot of room within graphic novels i guess for different ideas i think there's a lot of room within any genre there's liberty within within each genre um to allow people to accommodate or fit into any particular one yes i like that I like the fact that people can do that, find so their way. It's and better find... than being pigeonholed, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, the next couple which of can questions. Happen to... What's that? Which can happen. I said, which that can happen to people are pigeonholed and that's not fair. Well, no, it's not. But uh, unfortunately, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Yes. Yep. Uh, the next couple of questions will uh, uh, will lean towards the uh, direction of your graphic novel. Okay. So attention spans, <laughs> they're all different. Uh, what have you discovered to be the ideal book length for children or, well, I, yeah, children's still good, I guess. Does it, does it differ by age group? Well, I mean, for, for rabbit and bear, yeah, I think we, we are following that sort of outline or formula somewhat that is exists for children's books and um that was something i was totally unaware of when i when i first started canada rights i just i would just write and be like why couldn't this be a children's story and i would send it off to different publishers and or agents or whatever and and it would always be a no and then finally i was like all right what I'd be, you know, I remember one publisher got back to me and was like, you know, this is way too long to be a children's book. Um, something that I, I wrote, it was a children's, specifically a children's story that was based on things my dad would say. And so I, I started looking into, you know, what, what does it take to have a, a children's book traditionally published? Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's, there's kind of like a set number of pages and, and word count. And yet yeah, it does go by, you know, it, age you know the less words the better for you know younger age groups and then you know as they grow older then you get it you know from picture books to middle middle grade and and things like that but um with rabbit and bear i didn't have a particular i i i pulled together somewhat of a a story arc for that and the same with my second book which is coming out soon it's like I, I take an idea which was for the first one it was make a wish and then I already had a lot of you know of the illustrations done and I just sort of made it 
follow a storyline and fit within, you know, my publisher let me know how many pages I was allotted within the book. And I want to, I want to say 64 pages, but then you have to make, you know, some of those pages are left blank or they're for copyright information and, and titles and, mm-hmm. and uh, bios and, you know, that sort of thing. So that was an interesting, interesting process to go through. And so I'm going, going through it again, but certainly when you're, when self-publishing, you can do what, whatever you like. For the most part, there's still rules to follow. For the most part, yes, yeah. So Robin and Bear, where do they fall mm-hmm. into with? Uh, there is a preferred reading age, like you know what I'm trying to say. Is where do, where does the reading level fall? Is it like for Robin and Bear? You you it's called a graphic <laughs> novel, but is there a is yeah. there a, a a reading age like minimum or do you know what I mean? I my thoughts with it have always been that if, if someone is, is buying it for the, the, you know, a child in their, in their life, that they'd be reading it together because while some of the things do seem very simple, the drawings and the words, the dialogue, there's more that can be taken from it. And, you know, if it, it can bring about discussion, you know, between a parent and a child or a grandparent and a child, you know, teachers and I, there's a lot of teachers now that are that are contacting me and saying that they're using it within within their schools or their classrooms. I don't I don't really my my I'd just be guessing at what the minimum age would be. Um, I'm thinking maybe you know you know five and they're sitting down, you know, with a with a parent, grandparent, aunt, uncle, teacher, and and going over rabbit and bear and I think everybody you know depending on what age you you are and you know what you're experiencing in life you're going to take away something different yeah and it can grow with a person I was just thinking about my my oldest son when he was grade one I want to say he he had read uh what did he read the empire strikes back Mm -hmm. and he read it with full understanding of what he was reading you know uh, yeah and which is incredible, but not everybody can do that, right? No, no. And it also, it, it has something to do with the way that the parents edu- educate their children at home as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, some parents just don't have that, uh, I want to be involved in my child. So, uh, books mm-hmm. like, books like Rabbit and Bear seem to be something that would bring them together, which is, yeah, that would, is lacking in today's culture. Yes. Yeah, that would, that, that would be wonderful if it's, if it's doing that. I'm hopeful that it, that it is. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a good hope. Mm-hmm. Moving along, publishing, traditional versus self-publishing. Uh, most, if not all children's books are hardcover. Places such as KDP do not offer, and uh, I sit here corrected because I've just been reading that they're, uh, considering going, doing some hardcover stuff as well, but uh, they don't offer this option, um, forcing self-publishing authors to find other <laughs> solutions. Uh, mm-hmm. Is it easier to publish through uh, traditional publishers then? Having, I've, I've done both. Back in 2014, I had the grand idea that I was going to start my own publishing company. Ooh, lofty. <laughs> and uh, to at that point, I was working on a novel. I, I just, I wanted, it was a goal I'd set out for myself because I, again, my, I'd always wanted to be a writer. And at that point, I, you know, my parents were gone and I needed, I'd lost my job because of my cancer diagnosis. It got in the way of my work. And, uh, I was, what am I going to do now? So I was like, I'm going to try this. And it was hard. <laughs> it was hard because I, I tried to help other, you know, authors get their books published and, you know, coordinating editors and illustrators and, you know, just working with the authors themselves to, to bring stories to life. I I found it very hard. And then while also wanting to publish my own work. So it was all everything. It was, I I give every, anybody who does self-publishing a lot of credit because there's a lot involved. So it is a blind guy. Yes. (laughs) It's, it's distrib, you know, marketing, distributing, you know, 
yeah, blah. And so when I, when Heather reached out, I've, I've, I've appreciated that because she, he is dealing with, you know, she's bringing the editor in. She's sourcing, you know, where we're going to have the book printed. She does the layout. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm supplying the, you know, the text and my, my drawings and I'm, I'm doing a lot of, you know, marketing, but it's, it's like a, it's like a partnership. And mm-hmm. I've been very appreciative of that because I don't have to, to deal with some of the stuff that I find overwhelming or, you know, taxing. So yeah, I've, I've, I've appreciated being traditionally published. Do you have a preference? At the moment, traditional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it frees you up to do a little bit more, I guess. That's one, one way to look at it, but. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's that. I don't have to, you know, think about, you know, trying to source a, a, a printing, you know, who's going to print it. And exactly. How am I going to get it to places? And yeah. So that I, I appreciate not having to, to, to do that part. Okay. And this time we did have the la- the last book. I know it was it was uh print locally. It was a a, pr- a printer through out of Barry, I want to say. May have got that wrong. But this time, yes, it's all be it's a, it's a hardcover book that's being printed through Amazon. Nice. Yeah. So this is just something new that that uh that they've they're come out with. So I'm excited to see what that's like. Me too. Yeah. Uh, it's going to open the door for a lot of people, I think, if they can do it successfully. Yeah. They just need to learn to start yeah. printing in Canada. Uh, that's another story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With so much going on in the world and, and so many agendas and positions and posturing, children <laughs> seem to be the prime target. Do you agree or disagree with this? Mm. Um, I certainly think that a lot of people want to, you know, write for them or, yeah, go go after them in order to influence thoughts and and inspire thinking. Uh, but in in my experience, it's it's been everyone, um, not just kids. Well, because I mean, when I'm on social media, I'm not interacting with that I know of anybody that's under the age of, I don't know, 18. <laughs> and if I, if I am, it's like, you know, my, my best friends, you know, kids, I, it's mostly, it's adults that I'm interacting with and they're, they're looking at, you know, rabbit and bears like, Oh, I, I didn't think about it that, that way. Or you've, you've brought, you know, something to my attention that I hadn't considered before, put it in, in, into words in such a way that I understand you know, this concept, you know, anxiety, say, or grief, loss in, in a, in a different way. That it's, um, well, there, there's so many quotes out there from past uh, leaders and dictators and, and whatnot that all are aimed at children. Well, you know, you, uh, yes. I'm not going to mention any names because I don't want to highlight anybody, <laughs> but some of the quotes, you know, deal with, if you can uh, capture the minds of the youth and you yes. you've won the next generation type thing, right? Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of that going on today, though, don't you think? I think so. Yeah, certainly. I mean, with, you know, what I'm paying attention to as far as environmental, you know, action and mm-hmm. um, improving, you know, the world around us and mindfulness, anxiety, you know, we're seeing more and more that, you know, these sorts of things are having a profound effect on 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 children, people of every any age. And um and we need to address it because, you know, maybe, you know, people weren't, you know, oh, kids are resilient. They'll bounce back. And yeah, maybe they will. I mean, you know, we all have resilience built into us to mm-hmm. some extent. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I don't think people really realized how much, you know, children absorb and they do. They're oh, sponges. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So if rabbit and bear can be, um, be there to help you know, provide advice or, or, um, calming, comforting words or a hope for children and anybody else. I'm, I'm all there for that. If, if you had to, without giving too much away, if you had to sum up rabbit and bear, what would you say the takeaway is from, from that book? From my first one, make a wish just, just to, 
you know, it's just, there's nothing wrong with wish, wishing and hoping for, for things like everybody's goals and dreams and wishes are, are, you know, unique to themselves and, and life, life can change quickly. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, and, you know, we, you'll put a wish out there. I think every, everything has energy. And, and that's how the book starts is the, you know, rabbit makes a wish and it just puts it out there with the, the help of a dandelion and it just floats off and it's out there. And just every thought, you know, we have too, I believe is, is energy and it goes out there into the world. And if we make a wish, then it's going to go off and it's going to, you know, it's conspiring. Maybe we've, maybe we lose track of it. Maybe it's a wish that we make like me as a child. I want to, I want to write books. Yeah. And then life comes in and takes over and I, you know, did this and I did that, but, you know, was far removed from writing books. I worked in public health for three years and did data entry um, for a good, you know, chunk of my career. And then, you know, there was cancer and, and then suddenly here, here I am. And that wish came true and mm. uh, it was like, wow, it was out there still working in the background conspiring to come true so so wish yeah. it, it might not look exactly as as you wanted it to in the beginning um but our lives change and yeah <laughs> back in uh, 19, 1984 i found myself in a in a clinic in uh, the east side of downtown vancouver and there was mm-hmm. a poster on the wall and i don't really remember the image on the poster but the caption of, of the poster has stuck with me ever since. And it basically goes, if you have it in you to dream, you have it in you to succeed. And I've hung on to mm-hmm. that all my life. Yep. And, yep. you know, I'm still waiting for the success, but I believe it. Yes. <laughs> you know, so we, we all, we all, yeah, wishes or dreams. I mean, you know, that's, that's what uh, motivates yeah. us. Well, and look at, look at you, Randy. <laughs> What, what? When we first met a few years ago, I remember you like, you know, wanting to partake in, in the, the short story contest. I think it was. Yeah. And, um, you know, to enter and, you know, we were both there, you know, all of us that were there, you know, asking questions and, you know, feeling things out and, and hear them on your podcast. Yeah. I, you know why I'm doing the podcast though, right? I'm, you know why I'm doing the podcast, right? I'm not entirely sure. Well, the the podcast is really for the benefit of, of, you know, maybe authors who aren't really getting a lot of, not notoriety, but a lot of, uh, spotlight time or, or, hey, look at me, I'm out here. And yes. I, I'm just hoping that this will give them another opportunity to, for people to notice them. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. I mean, if, if this is my giving back to, to writers, the writing community, <laughs> And it's my way of giving to the world, saying, hey, look, there's some good people out here with something to say. And yes. that is why I do this. And I love doing it. You're doing a great. I, I've loved the shows I've listened to so far. Cool. Um, Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, and I've got to meet some very interesting people as well. And uh, I mean, I've got, well, I've got a, a lineup of people waiting to be interviewed. And I, I don't know if I have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> But now we're going to go on to part two, and this is what I call the pudding and the proof. Okay. So the, the pudding will be your material, of course. Uh, the pudding, uh, well, we know what it means anyway. So this is the, this is the part about where you get to talk about your pudding, your published works and, and your current work in progress or, and the proof is where people can, can find all this stuff. So, uh, mm-hmm. can you let, the listeners know about your published books and where they might be able to find them. Well, my, my current published book, well, I've got, I guess there's two it there. Not, um, where I, rabbit and bear were first introduced was, uh, not cancel, um, Canadian kindness in the face of COVID-19. It's an anthology and that's available through Amazon and Indigo. Um, and then, uh, rabbit and bear make a wish is my current standalone rabbit and bear book, which was published just ahead of Christmas last year. And it's, a, it's available through or on Amazon worldwide and uh, here in Canada on uh, through Indigo. And I know 
it's on on some shelves inside um in stores uh but you can also order it online and uh my second book rabbit and bear return with the light it's coming soon it will be out in time um for christmas this year and and uh it's going to be again available through through amazon and um in in indigo bookstores or Cole's chapters um bookstores as well um that's not too far away you know that right it isn't it comes together it's all with it's 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 coming together now everything's with my publisher and uh it's 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 almost there it's exciting to see it all you know come we just did a the calendar we did a rabbit bear calendar not long ago and uh it's 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 exciting to see it all come together because i just you know send off a word document and upload images and it's like mm, what's this going to look like <laughs> and then it's this oh you know <laughs> i can hear the excitement thing. i can hear the excitement in your voice about this <laughs> it is it is it's exciting to see it all to 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 come together and um the crunch and you know push to get things going and you know the back and forth of the editing and all of that i i find it exciting it's like crunch time and then you see the finished product and it's it's exciting so what's um, worse the anticipation so, of the release or putting it together all of it <laughs> there's that there's that moment it's like it's like i can't it's like it's, is it going to come together and then Heather works her magic. She's she's like a one one woman show there at Winter Tickle Press, and and uh, she does the beautiful layout for you know my calendars and and the book, and it's you know it's just it's it's great to see it come together. So that is definitely exciting. And then yeah, once you know it's it's up there live, you know for sale or pre, you know pre order even. But then it's it's that that moment of when people are actually holding it in their hands and, and then I start to get feedback, that's, that's, uh, there's ner- some nerves there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, is it, is it printed? Did it print properly? You know, are the words all right? And, you know, did we miss something? It's all, it's, it's magic. I it guess. is. It is. And, <laughs> yeah. and that's why a lot yeah. of us like to do it. Yes. All right. So yeah, I- how and where can listeners find you on the web? I have a website um that I'm should be updating, but uh it's tarashannonwrites.com on social media, uh I'm on Facebook and Instagram and my handle for both is at Tara Shannon Writes. Okay. And I'm also on Twitter and that's at Bear Essentially. That's and you? That's me. Okay, I follow you. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think I I have a personal account with on Instagram too, and that's bear. It's bear dot essentially on on Instagram. I, I'm trying to kind of move everything over to just being at, at Tara Shannon Wright, so it's easier. I'm on TikTok with that. Not that I do a lot of TikToks, but uh, they're kind of fun. I'm trying. I try everything out. I like to try out the different social media platforms. Facebook is is uh, the most kind of popular at the moment for for what I do but I'm I'm trying to I've never been the best with Twitter I'm trying (laughs) maintenance is is the word that you you've got to keep going and and be oh it's so hard Um, but Facebook my son told me dad Facebook is for seniors now I know I've heard (laughs) I've heard the same um but what do you do when you've got like that's my my biggest following is on on Facebook and I'll throw out every now and it's like oh you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram and you know and I post I post regularly it's just uh it's just I find it interesting the way that it it happens and rolls out and and I part of me wonders you know is it is it because of you know the way that I started out with that image going viral and my name not being attached um, you know, had, had I been from the very start, would that mm-hmm. have looked different for Twitter and Instagram? I, I don't, I don't know, but Lucy's I enjoy favorite. learning. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Tara, this is or Tara, which, which, what works, which Tara. is the, Tara? Yeah. Tara. Tara. Okay. Yeah. Tara. All right. I apologize. <laughs> I think I've been calling Tara. you Tara. That's, that's okay. Short I, I, terraforming or something. <laughs> ter- um, growing up, well, obviously my parents they were like it's tara 
and that's how it's pronounced in Ireland. And right. then did they not turn around and, you know, you know, when you're in trouble and you get the full name and they would call me <laughs> without, without a doubt, a Tara. Mm-hmm. And so I, I just, I'm like, whatever. And I don't really mind if someone calls me Tara or Tara, but Tara. And, uh, but that's how, that's my nickname when I was little was Bear or Bera because I couldn't pronounce T's. Ah. So Tara, Bear. Well, Nick. I don't know if you know this about me or not, but my nickname is Bear. Oh, really? I and didn't has, know that. And has been for like 40 years. There you go. <laughs> I was I was on the streets for 13 years and that's what people called me so <laughs> and I I have a tattoo on my arm of a Kodiak grizzly so oh, that's, well, there you go we yeah, both have the same so, nickname <laughs> rabbit and bear that's why you know hey I got to get to know this person yes <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much Tara for uh thank for you. doing this and uh it's been uh the pleasure has been all mine to uh to do this uh, 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 for you and for the listeners. Uh, but I, I benefited from this because I got to know you a little bit better. So thank you for agreeing to do this. Oh. Thank you for having me. It was, it was lovely. It was nice to get to know you better too. Thank you. All right. You have been listening to Between the Lines with Randy Lacey. In future episodes, I will be talking with authors and writers from across the country about all things writing. So if you like what you heard, I encourage you to tune in to some future episodes of Between the Lines. 